Hello, it's Maxine. <laughs> Since my video yesterday um, was about me getting diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but I didn't speak too much about fibromyalgia and I kind of focused more on um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and how I thought it was more so that possibly. I wanted to focus today back towards fibromyalgia and explain a bit what it is and um, and uh, as I was writing down the points because I want to make this video a lot shorter today I was noticing that out of the list for ehlers danlos Syndrome 100% of the list I could identify with like in a, an above moderate range I would feel and then with this list of fibromyalgia, there's, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten points, and the other one was twelve, I believe, that I mentioned. There's obviously a lot more to it. I just found something off of Google. But out of the ten here, I can say that some of them aren't as much. And then the other half of the list is actually directly, like, almost the exact same symptoms as EDS so it is very interesting but I'm going to go through them and I wanted to just say because I don't want to like discredit discredit like fibromyalgia I was just more so trying to explain that in my experience with it it has just kind of always felt like a default diagnosis that um you know they kind of put some of these I don't know if you would call it more severe or not like I think all chronic pain is important like regardless but because it wasn't MS it wasn't lupus which thank god because those are probably more severe but um you know it, fibromyalgia can be just as debilitating and I'm sure EDS patients like um people with EDS as well but I still want to touch base on this because my official diagnosis is fibromyalgia so until I make time to actually see a doctor which is another thing because I mentioned you know how I face discrimination regarding disability status and uh being tested with HPV but then, um, sorry, I'm noticing something in distance. Hope this person's okay. <sighs> okay, so. Uh, what was I saying? Um, I don't remember. I got completely distracted. So, anyway, okay. Oh, like about um, HPV and... Oh, I wanted to say that, you know, it is a really scary time right now. Like, I'm sure a lot of places in the world are experiencing this, but I think more so in the past 10 years in Canada and America is like the shortage of healthcare workers, including doctors and family doctors. And right now um, in Victoria, unless you have your own family doctor, you know, you used to be able to just go walk to the walk-in clinic whenever you needed. Now you pretty much have to go to urgent care or the hospital if you want to see a doctor the same day because it, you have to call right at 8 a.m. in the morning. And sometimes you call at 8 a.m. and somehow they're already booked for the day. And that's the only way you can see them. And, uh, and well, this is a year ago because I haven't tried to make an appointment in a year, but that's how it was. And then there's some clinics taking advantage of people and charging a hundred dollars to make an appointment or something. So it just really sucks. It's like really scary. And, uh, 
and you know I work on call right now and I have to wait till at least like by 10 a.m before I can make a decision about what I'm going to do with my day and I can't afford to like take time off work I can't afford to go to an appointment where I could be working that day so it's just for me it's really hard right now but I guess I'm just gonna have to take a chance at missing a day's wage and make an appointment because my health is important and if I don't if my if it, like if my health isn't taken care of then how can I work so uh the things we go through as people but okay so back to fibromyalgia um so I found these on Google <laughs> but it's through Cleveland Clinic. And I'm sure that like, regardless of where you go, these are like the co most common symptoms of fibromyalgia. So it's muscle pain or tenderness. So I did mention that um, I felt that possibly mine is more joint, like um, joint related pain, but this is because I've been barely pushing myself for quite a long time. Um, when I do push myself, like if I'm doing something too physical one day, if I start working out, if I, you know, I remember specific times where like, you know, if I had to move all my things in a day when I used to live in apartments and stuff, it's like really severe pain and muscle pain. So I think that I have muscle pain as well as joint pain. And, but when I'm t looking after myself, it's just really not there as much, which I mean, it sounds like common sense, but it, it's just really hard to explain. Like it really just feels like being somebody very late in their later years. Like some 80 year olds and 90 year olds probably don't even experience the type of pain like where it feels like your ankles are in like a grip lock and you, it feels like you're walking on bloody ankles like and your feet aren't there like it just it's like really hard to explain so that's one point next is brain fog so yes memory issues like brain fog getting lost in my thoughts um like I have ADHD, but I also have brain fog. And also like sometimes when I'm speaking in these videos, like I don't think I have the best speech. I don't have the best delivery. I don't have the best vocabulary, but when I'm speaking in these videos, it is a lot different than how I communicate with people like one-on-one. -on -one. Like I, I can be like extremely shy around when I'm uncomfortable and I can be pretty closed off and reserved or stuck in my head in new environments but with people I'm comfortable with I tend to be able to speak freely but even then sometimes I like speaking in these videos is the closest thing you'll get to like the true me and how I think and how I feel because I'm not feeling direct judgment <laughs> afterwards I do think okay well should have I said that certain way or whatever but anyway um brain fog so I think how can I explain it a little better I think it's just sort of more related to like daily tasks and when you're working and just feeling like that heaviness where you know you're not thinking as clearly maybe you're not working as fast maybe you're like forgetting things um and so I think interestingly enough, what did it say on the other one? Like kind of distracted and stuff. So anyway, if you go back to my other video and you compare the list that I made about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, you'll see that a lot of these are pretty much the same. So fatigue, that was another one on the list. Yes, extreme fatigue. <laughs> um, Thankfully, like I did mention dizziness and stuff like that and fatigue, but thankfully it's never affected me while driving. And I need to say that on the record because I don't want someone to like use this against me one day and take away my license or something. Like 
I've driven really long distance driving and I've, um, I've never experienced dizziness or like fatigue while driving and I can drive for long extended periods of time. But I just think overall, generally my energy levels are pretty drained and fatigue like, and, and, uh, but not in like a bipolar type of way, but like, say I kind of have to force myself to get going to do something like whether it be cleaning or just like to really prep myself for a work day where it's going to be kind of nonstop and very active. I do have to like, um, once I do get going, I kind of can be like the energizer bunny where I like don't need as many breaks and, and I keep going and going and going, but then that's when the next day I'm in like extreme pain. So it's, uh, yeah, but that's just what I mean about fatigue. It was interesting. I was hearing about this person's experience with having narcolepsy and I thought there's been times in my life where I felt like that was a possibility, but I didn't know that like every diagnosis out there is like a spectrum. So there's a very extreme side and then there's the other side. Um, or I just, I didn't know that people with uh, narcolepsy could just be feeling tired like the entire day. And they, um, anyway, you have to look into that. I'm not saying I have narcolepsy, but I'm just saying that's the tired feeling. It, you know, every aspect of me and what makes me me, like PT, um, CPTSD and autism and ADHD and fibromyalgia and blah, blah, blah. Like it all affects me and how I interact with the world around me, how I feel about myself, how I develop relationships. But Fatigue really does suck because you just don't have that motivation to go out there and do things with your life. Like it's a lot easier just to sit around at home and watch TV when you're not feeling good. So the next is face and jaw pain. So like I said about the mole, that's pretty much the end of face and jaw pain. I don't think I get a lot of jaw pain. Um, having facial massages is really nice, but I think that helps anybody. So I don't exactly relate to face and jaw pain and I don't relate. The next one is headaches and migraines. I used to get a lot of headaches and somewhat like migraines when I was really young, but I was extremely sensitive to smells. So smoke, perfume, even just like certain cooking. And I still am like hyper like my senses are heightened as an autistic person. I think a lot of us do, whether it be sight, sound, smell, um, everything like that, textures. But I used to get a lot of headaches and sometimes I feel like, I don't know if it's dulled down or if I can just somehow, maybe it's because I'm older and I'm not a kid anymore and I can like remove myself from those situations where I don't get those headaches. Like if I, if someone's smoking, I don't have to stand by them. Or if someone's wearing heavy perfume, I can move away. But when I was young, I was kind of like trapped in these situations. Right. So I don't know if anything's improved there, if it's just like because of my freedom, <laughs> but thankfully I don't get a lot of headaches or migraines. And the only time I do get extreme migraines is if I try to quit caffeine, which I have done. I'd like to do again. Um, it only lasts like for one day, one or two days. Next is bladder control. Um, I think like as more as time has gone on, I have like a huge problem with holding it. It's like I need to go and I haven't had kids. So it's just solely based on getting older or possibly linked to fibromyalgia or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. But interesting enough, um, sometimes when I get like really in the zone of whatever I need to focus on, I kind of like, completely ignore how badly I need to go. It's almost like I'm 
it's like I'm completely unaware to how about I need to go until it's like almost too late or something. So, and next is uh, digestive problems. So yes, I mentioned that I have like a number of food sensitivities, which I should make my next video about food sensitivities because I think it's going to be extremely eye-opening to some people and um, I also want to say it in a way to like give thanks to naturopaths and I hope I'm saying that right and the work that they do and that I think I wish all everyone out there I wish I had they had access to that information because it's expensive to go looking for it and I really wish that every single person could because I like my whole life from childhood to my late 20s when I found this out I didn't know that I was like somewhat allergic in a sense to pistachios, mushrooms, um, peanuts, soy, rice, uh, like certain kinds of fish and peas and so many things that it's like, no wonder I felt like I was sick and dying half the time because I'm eating meals where there's always a little bit of one of those things in it. And I don't completely avoid them now, but just by reducing and some days eliminating, it's completely strengthened my gut health to the point that when I do have those things now, it's not as bad. So I really strongly, like, I'm going to say that again and again and again until more people, like, hear about it because... I just think that that's pretty life-changing because food sensitivities, it's not as severe where you're going to go into like, like, what's the thing where you like need an EpiPen? Like you're not going to have a severe flare where it, it can fix your breathing, but it um, can affect your skin. It can affect like brain fog. It can affect your gut health. Like pretty much this list. <laughs> And uh, it can even affect your mood. And so that's why it's kind of interesting that once I've figured out my food sensitivities, a lot of my fibromyalgia pain has gone away in the past. Like not completely because like I said, I have gotten a lot less active, which does help with my pain. And the thing about pain and what I say about working out, it's like, okay, if you take any person who's looking to gain muscle and strength in the gym, they're going to have pain and that's why they have off days and whatever. But it, it's in a severe way where, and it started at a young age, it started before I was like morbidly obese, it started in a time in my life where it shouldn't have been as severe as it was because when I would explain this type of pain and all the things I was experiencing to other people my age like no one could really relate and the next is uh so yeah like back to digestive problems yes I mentioned my food sensitivities I mentioned how I had severe constipation to the point that I was suffering with like hemorrhoids and a fissure for like 20 years before I finally got surgery which that is a video for a day too, because, um, like as unpleasant as that is, it, like, um, I think a lot of people suffer with that. So I'd like to bring it up. And I also wanted to mention what not to do after surgery and kind of just share my whole horrible experience with that and what I would do differently if I were to do that over again. The next is, which I would do it over again because it's completely changed my life and helped me not like being in pain. Imagine like being in pain every, almost every single time or have, even on the days where I didn't have pain, having like bleeding every t for 20 years. Like, I know that sounds ridiculous and exaggeration. Why wouldn't you get it taken care of sooner? But I, at a young age, I was given like these kinds of medications that no one was following up with me to make sure I was actually taking it and once it got to a certain point that medication wasn't helping the thing so I have to make another video about that because it just happened starting at a really young age and that medication wasn't going to fix my fissure and a fissure is extremely painful and some people relate it to childbirth 
so not only do I have CPTSD, but maybe my uh, fibromyalgia is linked to the pain that I've been in in all these ways. So next is memory problems. So yes, back to sort of like brain fog. I think they kind of go a little bit hand in hand. Brain fog is maybe like just feeling a little bit like your brain is like literally in a fog one day and not so much memory, but I think it could be somewhat. Memory problem, I am with me, I just think more so I have like a pretty bad short-term memory. Like I can remember, I have a pretty good long-term memory, but say I had a conversation with someone, say you had an argument with someone, I can't remember the exact sentence that was exchanged between each of us like in the exact order I can remember generally what they said like and what I said or um like people my age and my age group in school like if we had just learned something quickly and we had to take like a pop quiz on it like most of the time I would not be getting very good at that because it's like I well, I also was undiagnosed, not, I didn't have a diagnosis for dyslexia, which I do have a dyslexia. Like I'll write a sentence and I'll be putting the letters in front of each other that aren't right in the wrong order. And it makes everything take longer to do like exams and that. But anyway, so yeah, memory problem. The next is anxiety, depression. <laughs> Yes, but I also have CPTSD. I have, I'm autistic. I, um, you know, when I say I'm autistic and then I do these videos where I'm like talking, 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 talking. And then sometimes I think, I wonder if some people are interpreting me as a person who doesn't have it or if they do think I have it. But the thing is, like that's my own judgment of myself because I was like completely unaware of what autism even was growing up. I thought autism was only the very extreme level where you're almost nonverbal, you need extreme help and um, like severe limitations. And that is the case for some, but not all autistic people. That's why there's a spectrum. That's why there's like considered high functioning people out there with autism. and. And back when I was a kid, I was not high functioning. I was like, when I was really young, I really had a lot of problems, including being held back in school in grade two. So, and my vocabulary and my speech and being able to identify emotions and just everything. I think that's why like, I really enjoyed dramas and like reality TV and stuff because it really helps me kind of like get into the mindset of more like neurotypical people and how they think in facial expressions and all that stuff and that really helped me in some ways even though <laughs> I don't like those shows so much anymore because I'm not all about the drama I'm more so good I'm more so watch like the feel-good stuff I like like American Idol where it's like they share their stories and I'm a very um like empathetic person where I cry at people's sorrow and happiness happy moments so that's more the so the type of like reality shows I really like like um restoration shows about classic cars and I like um shows about like improvement like of yourself or home improvement and that type of stuff is what I mean. I'm not so much into the, definitely not like dis or um, desperate, I almost said desperate housewives. I mean like those other shows, you know what I mean. So anyway, um, yeah, anxiety, depression. Well, <laughs> is it fibromyalgia? Is it CPTSD? Is it being alienated? And bullied all through my life with being autistic you could that's just it goes with everything but I can say today um, being 35 years old my anxiety and depression is a lot less I may seem depressed in my stories where I'm like reliving these experiences and I'm like 
sighing and stuff like that but I've actually haven't been extremely depressed since 2016 so <laughs> that was about the time that I got um like real therapy for the first time and just like was able to really help myself and maybe I'll make a video about that too actually like I participated in a five-week program and you know, that was actually pretty helpful that I could like apply those types that type of education like I've applied that to my life for the past however many years it's been so yeah next is um So last is insomnia. I don't feel like I really get, I think I used to get bad insomnia. Um, I think I was like the kid who would stay up late and still wake up early and not be able to get like a full night's sleep a lot of the time. But then as I got older and then like when there's like a um important moment the next day I think it, my insomnia is more anxiety ridden or excitement driven where it's like I can't sleep because I'm thinking so much about what's going to happen the next day and then I start getting anxious thinking oh god well now I'm only going to get five hours sleep and now tomorrow's going to be ruined and then oh now I'm only going to get four hours of sleep because I just can't sh shut my brain off but when it comes to like true insomnia where you just can't like if you're making every effort you're turning the tv off you're putting your phone away I don't really get that much anymore and it could be because I don't know if like I said I've been very balanced in this past year where I've like lost in the past year and a half I lost weight gradually um 40 pounds so far from my max and I still have a ways to go but naturally and healthy as possible this past year and a half and in these videos like I have a very dry mouth lately too so I don't know what's going on like I don't mean to be like oh I have this and this and this and this and this and this but it's like um I'm sure there's some hormonal things to add to the list because I just have a dry mouth and sometimes it's even hard to but then again, I've been talking for how long now without even taking a sip of water, so I could... <laughs> there could be a logical explanation, but I haven't drank enough water today and I'm just talking, 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 but sometimes it's like I can't even swallow my own spit or something. But that happens when I eat too, like um, if I'm eating, if even if I'm chewing my food and taking my time, not just like shoving it down, I sometimes I have like a problem where it get, feels like it's stuck especially like pills I could never take like I don't take pills very often but if there was ever a time where I had to take like a Tylenol or something without water it would like get stuck there was a time I think I took a multivitamin one of those like capsule ones where the inside is like powder and it got stuck and I coughed and the powder went out like that <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I mean about dry mouth and the, like some sort of digestive problem but anyway so yeah that's my video about fibromyalgia so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so ten things out of the ten things I only one two three four, five, six, maybe six, seven, and not to the extreme. Whereas the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome was like a hundred percent, not at like m the max level, but like pretty high up there. And I think there was 12 points. So I think this is very important to bring up um, when I eventually talk to a doctor, possibly get my own family doctor again, it's maybe important for other people to mention in the comments, like if they have one or the other or both and how it impacts them and what they think about what I've shared about it. 
Um, I'd like to hear back from more of you eventually, but I know my views are very low right now and and maybe some people just don't feel comfortable sharing, but I hope one day that uh, someone feels comfortable sharing their story with me or others. And I hope my videos again help people in some way. And if you feel like supporting me, then please give a like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm disabled, I'm working, but if there was a way where I could make a little bit extra income just by people watching my videos, that's pretty cool. So it's not like the number one factor. Like if it was, I probably would have quit long ago because my channel hasn't grown very much between shorts and um, making these long videos. But that's probably my own doing as well because my shorts don't really relate whatsoever to my long videos. <laughs> so it's kind of, um, I don't know if it hurts things at all, but I just like making those videos. And it might seem weird sometimes, like I'm sharing things about like Barbies and collections and stuff, but I've always been like a collection type of person. A lot of the things I share are from my childhood. So whether it be like Pokemon or, or just any, like all the things that are in there are from my childhood. So it might seem weird that like a 35 year old is sharing that stuff, but it's more so, so to just show people like what is available, like kind of like in-store shopping versus online shopping that, you know, just to, um, like, I don't think I'm going to get sponsored by stores or anything like that. It's just that I think it's just something I like for some reason. I don't know. Maybe, oh, <laughs> because I've downgraded my whole life and become more of a minimalist, I think I find enjoyment in it because I've gotten rid of so many of my collections too that it's kind of, it's somewhat enjoyable for me for some reason. And I also used to have a home daycare, so part of it for four years, and I really miss it greatly. So part of it is like sharing things so parents can see what's in there, like if their kid has special interests or collections, and then they can see what's available. But yeah. So that's kind of why I feel like lately I've needed to explain that for some reason and no one's but bothered me about it, but I guess I started to think it is kind of strange because I noticed like some of my comments are probably, it's very obvious that it's like children. And then I started getting feeling weird about it. I was like, I hope no one thinks I'm like trying to attract children or something like all my videos are set to not for children even if the short is like a child like object but I always say too much I'm just putting myself in a situation where it just sounds really weird but I hope people understand what I'm trying to say is just that that short form is more for my enjoyment and it can be helpful to kids and parents and whoever autistic people a lot of us have um like interests that a lot of people in our age range would think is uncool or <laughs> unheard of so yeah sometimes I feel bad because I don't want to reply to these kids commenting <laughs> I just should. I was a daycare lady for four years. I love kids. So those are good times. <laughs> anyway, um, that's where I'll leave my video today. So this one was mostly about fibromyalgia. And next I have other things. I could do my surgery food sensitivities. Maybe I'll do the food sensitivities first and then I'll do my surgery. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.